When we compare observations taken from different distributions, we often use measurements like measures of central tendency, including the mean, uh, as well as measures of spread, including things like the standard deviation, to describe attributes of those distributions. Now another useful measure is called the standard score. And what the standard score tells us is how many uh, standard deviations a score is away from the sample mean. And this also is useful for telling us things like uh, what percentage of scores are higher or lower than our given score. And this can, for example, tell us how we fared in a given course or an examination. And it's really especially useful when we are doing things like comparing scores between two courses with different values. So say if we wanted to compare a score of 72 that uh, we had received in, a, in two different courses. We have here a course in algebra and a course in calculus. Um, to begin to find the standard score, we're going to look at things like the mean and the standard deviation for both. So just for ease of notation, I'm going to change this over to x for the algebra course. And we'll change the calculus course over to y. So let's find the mean of the algebra course. We'll do so using our student statistics context menu. Here we see that the mean of the algebra course is 65. So in this case, a score of 72 is, is above the mean. And let's have a look at the mean for the calculus course. Here the mean is 76. So in this case, a score of 72 is below the mean. So the next step toward calculating the standard score is going to be to find the standard deviation. So we'll do so again using our right-click menus here. And now that we've got the mean and the standard deviation, we can go on to calculate the so-called z-score, or the standard score. And we're going to do so by filling out the following formula. So I'm just going to type it into our worksheet here. So we're going to say z, referring to our z-score, is equal to, and we'll just call any value from our sample up here x minus our sample mean, which is going to be, we can just denote as mu for now, divided by the standard deviation, which we can denote by sigma. And what this formula is really saying to us is that we, what we're going to do is we're going to take our value that we're wondering what this, the z-score is for, and we're going to minus the mean. So what we're doing is, in effect, we're centering that value. And then we're going to divide by the standard deviation. And the difference between these two, divided by the standard deviation, will give us the number of standard deviations which that score is away from that mean. So let's go through and actually do this count computation for the value of 72 for the calculus course. So we start by typing in 72 minus our mean, which was 65. And I'll borrow the standard deviation from above. So we'll divide by that value. And there's our said score. Now let me approximate this. We get a better idea of what this looks like. So in this case, the score is going to be equal to 0.81. And what this tells us is that our score, or the value of 72, is approximately 0.8 standard deviations away from the sample mean. So let's go through. We'll do the same thing over here for the calculus course. So we'll take our value, which was 72 minus the mean, which is 76. We'll divide by the standard deviation. And then we'll approximate that value. So in this case, we are uh, minus or below the mean by approximately half a standard deviation or so. And now that we have these two standard scores, and if we have a standard normal distribution table handy, we can look up the values for each one of these. So if we start by looking up the value for 0 0.81 in our standard normal distribution table, we can see that the, the probability of finding a score higher than 0.81 is actually going to be equal to 0 0.2090. So what that basically means is that we're in the top 
21st percentile of the, of the values in that, course, in that course. And let's look up the same thing for this value of minus 0.43. So in this one, we actually get the value is 0 0.3336. And since we're minus, we're just going to go this way. So this means that the probability of finding a value greater than uh, this, this value is in fact 66% or so. Now one other way for you to find this probability would be to use something like the CDF command inside of Maple. And, and I won't go into detail now about computing CDFs with just, just of a distribution, uh, but for the moment, Let's just show you how you could compute this. So we would take 1 minus the CDF taken from a normal random variable with mean 0, standard deviation 1. Now we use our value here and compute the value. So here you can see it's, it's roughly that same value that we would get from that standard normal distribution table. And let's do the same thing on the other side. And we'll use our other value here, which is this minus value here. To get back that same value as we saw before, just by looking it up in the table. 